there are millions of different types of organisms that inhabit the earth at any time some extremely similar to each other others very different every species is linked directly or indirectly with a multitude of other species in an ecosystem all these living organisms have their surrounding environment with which they continuously interact and remain adapted so we can say environment is the sum total of physical and biotic conditions influencing the responses of the organisms the life supporting environment of planet earth that is the biosphere is composed of following three main components air water and soil and today this will be a topic of discussion hello students i welcome you all to today's lesson which is about the living organisms and their environment students sada aaj ka topic apne aas paas paaye jaan wale jeeva de aale dwale ghumega is de naal hi asi organisms ate unna de environment vich le interaction bare vi gal karange so there is a definite term which deals with these aspects jis nu ecology kehnde han ए टर्म दो ग्रीक वर्ड्स ओइकोस अते लोगोस तो डिराइव कीती गई है ओइकोस दा मतलब है हाउस जा रहन दी था अते लोगोस दा मतलब है अ डिस्कशन और स्टडी लिटरली इकोलॉजी इज द स्टडी ऑफ ऑर्गेनिज्म एट होम इन देयर नेचुरल एनवायरनमेंट द टर्म वाज फर्स्ट इंट्रोड्यूस्ड बाय रीटर इन 1868 but was fully defined by Ernest Haeckel in 1869 Haeckel defined ecology as the science of the relations of all organisms to their environments so ecology is usually defined as the study of the relations between organisms and their environment these living organisms and the physical environment have a close relationship they interact with each other the biosphere is the parts of earth inhabited by living organisms the biosphere consists of specific geographical areas known as biomes a biome is a collection of different types of ecosystems the ecosystems include grasslands rainforests streams lakes sea deserts etc with various types of organisms starting from bacteria fungi algae and various other types of plants and animals each organism lives in a specialized regional environment within the ecosystem known as the habitat deep sea vents bottom of sea arctic rivers and river banks etc are examples of habitats organisms living in a specific environment interact with the environment and also among themselves in different ways for example there are many algae free floating in the water this may reduce the penetration of sunlight so the light intensity under the water decreases all the organisms living in an environment along with their physical environment form an ecosystem all organisms on land along with their environment form the terrestrial ecosystem ek ecosystem which abiotic ate biotic components hunde han a components collectively ek natural ecological unit banaunde han jisnu ecosystem keha janda hai par asal sawal a hai ਕੀ ਇਹ ਐਬਾਇਓਟਿਕ ਅਤੇ ਬਾਇਓਟਿਕ ਕੰਪੋਨੈਂਟਸ ਕੀ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਹਨ ਲੈਟ ਅਸ ਸਟੱਡੀ ਥੀਸ ਕੰਪੋਨੈਂਟਸ ਦ 
The term abiotic means without life or non-living. The abiotic components are sunlight, temperature, water or moisture, atmospheric gases, soil, inorganic substances like carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, etc. While the biotic components are the living organisms that shape an ecosystem, examples of biotic components are any living organisms such as animals, plants, birds, mammals, and single celled organisms. Asi abiotic components nal apni charcha shuru kar de haan. Tusi odam da na sunya hovega. Jisne ecosystem de karaj ate bantar bare dasya. E. P. Odam ne unni soi katar vich ecosystem nu do muk paga vich vandaya. Abiotic components and biotic components. The term abiotic means without life or non-living. Many substances such as water, oxygen, sodium chloride, nitrogen and carbon dioxide are abiotic. Many elements may be tightly bound in inorganic compounds as silicon in sandstone or aluminium in feldspar are unavailable to living organisms. Elements such as oxygen, which are normally very active in biological processes, may be in an abiotic form readily available to living organisms, such as free oxygen and carbon dioxide, etc. The abiotic components can be classified into three groups. Let's have a look. Abiotic components Climatic and edific factors. Climatic factors include physical factors of the environment such as light, temperature, humidity, wind, etc. while the edific factors are associated with the soil and include quality, topography, and the fertility of soil. Inorganic substances are involved in inorganic nutrient cycles such as carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus cycles, etc. While organic substances are present in dead organic matters, these inorganic and organic substances provide a link between living and non-living factors. That's why they are also known as energy cycle. Hoon asi keh sakde haan ki light, temperature, water, atmospheric gases, wind, soil, topography etc. collectively environment which ek vital role play kar de haan. E sare factors abiotic factors vajjo jane jande han. All these help plants and animals to grow and carry out different activities. It is well known that sun is the prime source of energy in all ecosystems. So, let's have a look at the role of sunlight in the ecosystem. Sunlight The sun as abiotic component is the main source of energy for all organisms on earth. The green plants need this solar energy to produce food during the process of photosynthesis. It helps to grow the plants. Plants are consumed by animals and human beings. So, it is a prime source of energy for all ecosystems. Like the quality, 
light the intensity ate light the duration pav ki suraj di roshni kinne kante rahi ja din di labai kinni hai e sab ecosystem nu prabhavit karan wale karak han now we move on to another abiotic component that affects organisms that is temperature temperature also determines whether the organism can survive or not in a particular ecosystem the distribution of plants and animals is greatly influenced by temperature let's find out the impact of temperature in the ecosystem role of temperature animals living in the polar region require thick fur to adapt to the cold temperature the opening of the flowers of various plants during the day and night is often due to difference between the day and night temperature mainly white flowers open at night time while colored flowers open during the day desert species are also affected by great variations between day and night temperatures another important abiotic component is water water is equally important for an ecosystem paude ate janwar jal vayu mandal ate sukhe maruthala vich bilkul vakri tarah da jeevan guzarde han pani jeevan layi zaruri tat hai ate sare sajeev zinda rehan layi is te nirbhar karde han aao janwara ate paudiyan diyan pani sambandhi loda bare jande ha life on earth originated in water and life cannot be sustained without water the productivity and distribution of plants is also greatly dependent on water you might think that organisms living in oceans lakes and rivers do not face any water related problems but this is not true for aquatic organisms the quality of water becomes important some organisms are tolerant to a wide range of salinity while others can tolerate only a narrow range of salinity many freshwater animals cannot live for long in sea water and vice versa because of the osmotic problems they face so water and its quality are very important for the survival of all living organisms in deserts availability of water is so limited that only special adaptations of organisms make it possible for them to live there apart from the adaptations in plants according to water availability there are a few interesting adaptations of terrestrial animals mentioned here the most common example of desert animal is camel कैमल अपने अंदर बहुत सारा पानी स्टोर करके रख सकता है कई जानवर जीवे डियर दिया पसीना ग्रंथियां नहीं होंदिया अते ओ अपने आप नु ठंडा रखन ले होर तरीके वर्त दे हन अते वाष्पीकरण ते कट निर्भर हुंदे हन नाउ वी आर फैमिलियर विद सनलाइट टेंपरेचर एंड वाटर एज इंपॉर्टेंट कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ द इकोसिस्टम Let us analyze some other abiotic components like soil. Mitti tarti di sata te kudrati taur te banan wali parat hai. A adaptive factor hai. Mitti chattana de tutte hoye kana to bandi hai. Is se banan da karan rasayanik ate vayu mandali kriyaavan han. Hun asi ecosystem utte mitti da prabhav dekhde ha. soil in agriculture soil serves as the primary nutrient base for the plants soil resources are vital to the environment as it provides the basis for life giving nutrients to plants which in turn support animal life soil absorbs 
rainwater and retains it for use by the plants. It helps to prevent floods and drought. Soil cleans the water as it percolates through it. Soil is also a habitat for many organisms. Overall, we can say that it helps to maintain the ecology. Aetasi abiotic components bare jankari. Hunasi vegdeha ki different organisms in a abiotic factors prati kis tara respond kardehan. Response to abiotic factors. Climate and the environment have drastic effects on the behavior and physiology of an organism. Increase in temperature, for example, can raise the metabolic rate and affect the course of development of an organism. Humidity levels and the availability of water often disturb the distribution of organisms. In a similar way, the chemical composition of water, that is, pH, salinity, etc. affect development and various processes of plants as well as animals. But the real question is that how does the organism cope or manage with such stressful conditions? You must have heard about the term homeostasis. Most living organisms tend to maintain a constant internal environment in terms of optimal temperature and osmotic concentration of their body fluids. This is called homeostasis. So, let us now discuss various possibilities how organisms cope with stressful conditions. The first one is Regulate. As we know that some organisms are able to maintain homeostasis by physiological means which ensures constant body temperature, constant osmotic concentration, etc. Birds, mammals and a very few lower vertebrates and invertebrate species are a perfect example of such regulation. The mechanisms used by most mammals to regulate their body temperature is similar to the ones that we humans use. We maintain a constant body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. In summer, when atmospheric temperature is higher than our body temperature, we perspire or sweat. The resulting evaporative cooling brings down a body temperature. So this is how we regulate our body temperature according to temperature of the environment. So this is how animals and human beings regulate their body temperature. Like this process, there is another method through which living organisms cope with stressful conditions, which is known as conform. So let us now focus on the second method, conform. In aquatic animals, the osmotic concentration of body fluids changes with that of the ambient water osmotic concentration. These animals and plants are simply conformers. If we take into account the benefits of a constant internal environment to the organism, we must ask why these conformers had not evolved to become regulators. We can compare this with a simple human behavior that how many people can really afford an air conditioner. Most of us simply sweat it out and resign ourselves to suboptimal performance in the hot summer months. So this thermoregulation is energetically expensive for many organisms. This is particularly true 
for small animals like shrews and hummingbirds. As we know that heat loss or heat gain is a function of surface area. Since small animals have a larger surface area relative to their volume, they tend to lose body heat very fast when it is cold outside. Then they have to expand much energy to generate body heat through metabolism. This is the main reason why very small animals are rarely found in polar regions. Some species have evolved the ability to regulate, but only over a limited range of environmental conditions beyond which they simply conform. If the stressful external conditions are localized, or remain only for a short duration, the organism has two other alternatives which are basically migrate and suspend. Let us first discuss migrate. Migration involves shorter or longer journey undertaken by the animals to resist the temperature extremes so they move temporarily away from the stressful conditions to a more favorable area and return to the original habitat when the stressful conditions are over during winter many animals particularly birds undertake long distance migrations to more hospitable areas Every winter, the famous Kyolyadyo National Park, Bharatpur, in Rajasthan, hosts thousands of migratory birds coming from Siberia and other extremely cold northern regions. The other behavior that living organisms possess to cope with stressful conditions is suspend. Some living organisms like bacteria, fungi, and lower plants form various kinds of thick-walled spores which help them to survive unfavorable conditions. These organisms then germinate on availability of suitable environment. Similarly, in higher plants, seeds and some other vegetative reproductive structures serve as means to tide over periods of stress besides helping in dispersal. They germinate to form new plants under favorable moisture and temperature conditions. They do so by reducing the metabolic activity and going into a state of dormancy. Students, इसे तरह animals stressful conditions नाल cope up कर दे हन. Animals जो migrate नहीं कर सक दे, stress नू avoid करन ले, समय सिर अपना बचाव कर दे हन. इसे तरह bears दे case विच हुंदा है, जो कि सर्दियां विच hibernation विच चले जान दे हन. कुछ snails अते fishes, summer related problems, heat and desiccation nu avoid karan lai astivation vich chale jande han. Under unfavorable conditions, many zooplankton species in lakes and ponds are known to enter diapause, a stage of suspended development. So students, this was all about organisms and their environment and with this we conclude our today's lesson. Let us summarize all what we have learned so far. The term ecology is derived from two Greek words. Oikos means house or place to live and logos means a discussion or study. Literally, ecology is the study of organism at home in their native environment. The term was first introduced by Reiter in 1868, 
but was fully defined by Ernest Haeckel in 1869. Haeckel defined ecology as the science of the relations of all organisms to their environments. The term abiotic means without life or non-living. The abiotic components are sunlight, temperature, water or moisture, atmospheric gases, soil, inorganic substances like carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, etc. The biotic components are the living organisms that shape an ecosystem. Examples of biotic components are any living organisms such as animals, plants, birds, mammals and single-celled organisms. Climatic factors include physical factors of environment which include light, temperature, humidity, wind, etc. While the edaphic factors are associated with soil factors which include quality, topography and the fertility of soil. Most living organisms tend to maintain a constancy of their internal environment in terms of optimal temperature and osmotic concentration of their body fluids called homeostasis. In living organisms, the homeostasis is maintained by morphological or behavioral means like regulate, conform, migrate and suspend. Migration involves shorter or longer journey undertaken by the animals to resist the temperature extremes as they move temporarily away from the stressful conditions to a more favorable area and return to their original habitat when stressful conditions are over. Many animals, particularly birds, during winter undertake long distance migrations to more hospitable areas. Bachyo ajle innahi. Aao ek chote jehe test rahi apne aj hasil kite gyanu par kiye. Pehla question hai, define ecology. Answer. Haeckel defined ecology as the science of the relations of all organisms to their environments. Next question. What are the abiotic components? The answer is, all the inorganic materials are called abiotic components such as light, water, nitrogen, etc. Next question is, what are the biotic components? Answer, all the living organisms are called biotic components such as plants, animals, etc. My next question is, mention three inorganic nutrients. Answer, carbon, nitrogen and phosphorus are the three inorganic nutrients. Next question, name three important gases used by the plants and animals. And the answer is, oxygen, carbon dioxide and nitrogen are the three important gases used by the plants and animals. And the next question is, what is homeostasis? Answer, most living organisms tend to maintain a constancy of their internal environment in terms of optimal temperature and osmotic concentration of their body fluids. This is called homeostasis. The next question is, name the various means by which living organisms maintain homeostasis. The answer is, in living organisms, homeostasis is maintained by morphological or behavioral means like regulate, 
conform, migrate and suspend. Students, hope I have made a successful attempt to clear the concepts regarding organisms and their environment, which will help you in fetching good marks in the exam. Thanks for your cooperation and attention. Looking forward to the next class. See you then. Thanks.